Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Yoshman Reacts. How are you all doing today? Hope you're having a great weekend so far. Uh, I'm back with another reaction and it's going to be um, season 1 episode 6 of Chewing the Fat. Uh, because I haven't done Chewing the Fat for a, quite a while. So yeah, we're going to go back to it. Uh, so <clears throat> don't want this to take too long. So yeah, if you enjoyed this please do give it a like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's go. That club was great the night, eh? Music was brilliant. Uh, I, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd never been before. That's how I've never seen you before. <laughs> I'm glad I did the night, though. Really glad. Um, uh, Jane, before you, um, before we, you know, uh, th th there's something I should tell you. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, j just. Oh, j oh. Um, right. Um, how can I put this? I've never been the full twelve rounds before. What do you mean? Well, you know, I, I've, never, I've never challenged for the title, you know? I, I'm, I've done my training. I've had the rub down and... Uh, oh, yeah. I've had the old gloves on, you know? I've just no real experience of the ring, so to speak. <laughs> of but, the but, ring? Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've done the bag work, you know? And, uh, and, and, and the shadow boxing and all that, yeah? <laughs> Lord knows I've sparred myself stupid. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm sorry, but the innuendos here... I, I can't be the only one getting them, picking them up, picking uh, up on them. I've never gone toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with anybody, so to speak. I don't really know what you mean. Well, I mean, I've never mounted the ropes, you know. I've, I've, never, I've never actually bobbed and weaved, you know? Hmm? Yeah? I've never, I've oh, never... my God. I've Just gone, say no, what no. you mean to say. You're saying you've never actually... That's exactly what I'm saying. Right, well, have you had a blow <laughs> below the belt before? <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, yeah, I've, 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 I've had that. Uh -huh, okay, right, well, okay. get the gum shield at the bedside cabinet it, because it's ding ding round one. <laughs> we know the intro. We know the intro by now. Hi there. Hi there. What's the matter? Nothing. No, come on, there is something on me. Ah, well, I'm full of fear. Full of fear. I'm brim full of fear, Forty. How so? Well, I'm fear of the future. There's no reason for you to be afraid of the future. Come on. Well, it shows six and all that, you know. I'm just feeling a little. Because it's the last show. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Columbus at the edge of the earth. Yeah, well, you shouldn't fear the future. I'm looking forward to the future in a sort of tomorrow world day sort of thing. So what do you think the future holds for us then, my chum? Well, I hope it gets all sort of Star Trek game. We've got teleporters and stuff like that. Oh, teleporters. They don't fill me with confidence. Oh, you're a bit of a crapper dog, aren't you? Yeah, it's just that they're going to replace the airplanes for travel, uh -huh. right? And uh, what'll happen with that is, you know the whole lost luggage ethos? Yeah. We're going to zip to our location through the teleporter, mm -hmm. and we're going to have somebody else's head when we get there. Oof. And women's feet. Oh, that's a mess. Mm. My nose is in Mallorca, my ass is in Miami. It's no good. No, it's no. But listen, what? just relax. There's nothing to fear for the future. Ah, you're right. There's nothing to fear for the future. Nothing to fear from the future. Nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. Really? No. I'm building a bunker. You've got to. Obviously. I've got to. <laughs> Little did they know what would happen in about I need in their TV everything. Absolutely. 18 years. Yeah, you should definitely have a bunker. Mm -hmm. Are you going to let me in it? No. COVID. Well, either you chip in now or you don't get in. Let me in the bunker. No, you're not getting in. Let me in the bunker. You don't get in. Let me in the bunker. You're not getting in. Come on now. Let me in now. <laughs> Come on now, fella. The joke's over. <laughs> Victor tried that. If you don't let me the bunker, <laughs> I'll wait till you go in there and lock the big time lock door. It doesn't let you out for 20 years. Episode 1 of Series 7. Vent. Tried to break in. You out. I don't have to let you in, Greg. I'll tell you why. Because there are millions and millions of people who will offer me plenty of different wonderful things to get into my bunker. Maybe you'll get men offering your daughters to get into your bunker. Well, I didn't think of that. Do you think so? Oh, yeah. Men offering their daughters, eh? Absolutely. Mm. It'll definitely happen. I'm not going to build it down the stairs. Where are you going to build it? I'm going to build it next to Mr. Evangelista's house. Oh, genius, genius. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'll come in for a close-up on Gary. Close-up. And Tim, and then we finish on Ronald. Oh. Ronald! Okay, well, did you pick your cards up? Ronald Villiers! And you've got a good hand. It's my old pal, Ronald, uh, yeah, Ronald Villiers. I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here myself. All oh, right, sorry. It, it, when it come and pump. <laughs> So just remember, it's, it's all in the eyes, okay? okay it's all in the eyes. Out of those face. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You do that, that's far too much. These two guys would fold. Right. Uh -huh. Fold. Throw the cards in. All right, so you want me to make a face and then throw my cards in? No, I don't want you to throw your cards in, Ronald, okay? Face, 
Cards. Right. Face cards. I mean, just, we'll just throw my face cards in. Jackie! <laughs> Ronald, <laughs> Sam's awful busy. What is it you don't understand? I understand everything fine. Jack oh, Ronald. Well, you see, thing, let me explain. I've got my face, my own face mixed up with my face cards, that's all. When the camera pans into you, right. pick up the cards and have a peek. Bless him. Quiet, please! OK, let's go for a take. <clears throat> Action. Winston. Paul. Mark. Sam, Mark. Oh, Mary, mother of God, would you look at them? <laughs> Ronald, don't say anything. Right. Just make the face. Just make the happy face. No, 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 not the happy face. The I've got a reasonably good hand face, OK? Right. Reasonably good hand face. Right, once Ronald's seen his cards, Tim, you start the betting. Right. What's he going to do Quiet, next? please! They're like this with his hand. Oh, that's a reasonably good hand. <laughs> Bad. You're bad. I bet a hundred. I see you a hundred, and I raise you a hundred and fifty. I bet a pound, a dollar. Cut! Ronald, what is a pat dollar? A pat well, it dollar. Simple, and then, you know, lull them in their false sense of security and then go in for the kill. Okay, okay, but Tim bet a hundred, right. Gary bet a hundred and fifty. Okay. You can't right. bet less than that. Betting. It's a high stakes game. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, well, I'll say. I'll bet a tenner. No, no, you can't bet a tenner. No, <laughs> tenner. you can't bet ten dollars. Right. No, oh, you've got to bet a hundred no. plus a hundred and fifty. You've got to bet two hundred and fifty. Oh. Yep. Bro Ronald, when we auditioned you, we asked you if you had any knowledge of poker. Do you remember that? I do remember that, but you see, I just ticked tie because it's parlor games I'm better at, you see. Like oh, what? Man. Well, you know, hunting the button and charades and talking about games. Okay, if you could bring <laughs> your knowledge of your parlor games right. to this poker game, that'd right. be much appreciated. You, use that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You use that, right. okay? Okay. Right, we'll just uh, right. we'll cut to the end scene oh, where Ronald reveals his hand. Goes if we could get a little smoke in here. <laughs> now, Tim. Remember, you're first to reveal, OK? Everybody ready? <laughs> Can we have some quiet, please? And action. <clears throat> what have you got, Jake? Big Jake. Mm -hmm. Three beautiful young ladies. Three of a kind, huh? What about these? Go on a full house. I win. Now you hold on. Camp Dave still the show. What you got, Camp Dave? <laughs> hey, read them and weak gentlemen. Gen Rummy. What? <laughs> Damn! Hey! Is your captain speaking? We're currently flying. <laughs> hey, read them and weak gentlemen. Gen Rummy. <laughs> God. I am at 35,000 feet over Wichita. <laughs> we'll be arriving in Houston in just under three hours' time. Oh, so Ronald! Relax and enjoy. Take this plane to New York! What are you crazy? Oh, you're shit. Your is this some kind of joke? This is no joke. I want to go right now, rinky dinky pronto, big apple. Oh, my God, Captain. <laughs> he's got a bomb strapped to his body. That's right, cutesy, woodsy, all American, blueberry, pie face, homecoming queen. 40 pounds of Centex. Enough to blow us all to yard. <laughs> Why New York? For the old day, power breakfast at Benny's. Only two ninety five Yankee bucks. <laughs> power breakfast? They got that in Houston. Plus refills. Okay, let's go to Houston. Oh my god. At Benny's. It's dynamite. Offer does not include Bayou Baked Bean Bonanza. Oh, dynamite. Son, oh, that's your tea. Come on. Come on, new son. Your fish fingers are getting cold. And your mash is getting a skin on it. Hurry up. How does mash get a skin on it? Mashed potato, she means, right? How does it get skin on it? Hmm? Huh? Right, come on, son, that's your fish fingers congealing. Oh, that's them congealed. <laughs> They're colder than they were when I took them out of the freezer. Oh, they've turned the whole kitchen cold now. That's them turned the kitchen and the hall into an Arctic landscape. It's this is my grandma, right? When we go up for dinner and she says, right, tea, dinner's ready, whatever. If I take any longer than five seconds, she'll go, right, that's it, it's going cold now, it's going cold. It's like, calm down. 
She literally puts the food on piping hot plates anyway. It's like, calm down. Yeah? The food isn't going to die. It's not going to go cold in like a minute. <laughs> Let me get me ass out the seats. <laughs> oh, but you know, it's just because she she loves us all and she just wants us all to enjoy it, the food as much as possible. But she eats her food red hot. I can't eat it like that. My mouth, you know, I can't take burning hot food. But she, you know, she's like, yeah, I don't mind. You know, oh, yeah, my mouth's on fire, but I can't feel it. It's like, what? <laughs> No, my food needs to cool down just a little bit for me to be able to eat it. But she, she's straight in, you know? But is anybody else's grandma or mother like that? Look, let me know. It's killed your father. Hurry up, son. Killed you. Right, son, uh, your father still did betate. Your <laughs> best pal Michael's come in. Here he is. Come on down. What's that you're saying, Michael? Oh, you brought that boy for Titanic, were you that Leonardo DiCaprio? Hear <laughs> him. I'll need to put some crispy pancakes on, you hear that? Oh, crispy pancakes, who remembers them? Oh. Now, does anybody remember when they did like an ice cream one? I used to think that I am, was imagining that, because I only had him as a kid and then they disappeared and never seen him since. But they definitely existed. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Come on! Hot. Dang hot. How about some sales, man? Oh, thank you kindly. <laughs> you know, I can't remember last time anybody drove up here asking for directions and we killed them and put them in a swamp. Been a long time since we showed anybody around. I'm not sure I'd know what in hell to do. I think what we need is a change of direction. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know the swamp's chock full of folk and stuff. So? So, I come up with a plan to keep us occupied. Jack, well, Ford, he sounds like someone I've seen in either a film or a TV show with that accent. Oh, who is it? Occupied. Let me hear it again. Yeah. Well, you know the swamp's chock full of folk and stuff. So? So? I come up with a plan to keep us occupied. Uh, you got it? to do with all that noise you've been making in the basement? Sure has. You wait there. I want to show you something. It's going to put a grin on your face wider than the gator. <laughs> oh, my God. He sounds so like somebody. Not like a, a I mean, a, a character. Oh, who is it? That's going to annoy me now. Oh, but he sounds exactly like a character from a, an American film based in, like... Oh, it's not somebody out of... Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to waste time on this, but... Oh. Love a sea fries? <laughs> Ain't nothing finer than a sea fries. <laughs> well, what you think? Oh, that there's the finest jacket I ever did done, see? Look, <laughs> they done, see? What's it made of? Skin. Oh. And before you suggest, no, it's not Cletus from The Simpsons. That's not who I'm thinking of. Oh, you didn't done slaughter Bessie now to make yourself a pig skin jacket, did you? No. Well, what kind of skin is it? Well, you know, about a week ago when that city slicker came rolling in, in the big car from the real estate office, hollering about how he was going to repossess the shack and the gas station. <laughs> oh, tickle my ass with crabgrass. He's about your height, too. Ooh, he had... Well, tickle my ass with crabgrass. <laughs> I love the southern accent from Amer America. It's so funny. It's Oh, I love it. Fine skin, pretty pink skin. I got something for you. Pretty pink skin. There you go. Put it on. What? Give them to me. I'm gonna put them on right now. Give them to me. No, you can't have them right now. Why not? Cause there's a little hole in the ass. I gotta stitch up first. <laughs> well, uh... he made a pair of 
Oh, <laughs> With a meat and two veg bucket. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Do you know what? In this crazy climate of fashion, the shit you see on the catwalks these days, I bet somebody would buy those. <laughs> It'd be somebody like Prada or someone making them and be like 400 quid a pair. <laughs> the art tribute in as our client list includes the Rolling Clones, Phony Bennett. The Rolling Paul Clones? Saints, Janice Isn't. Janice Isn't! Uh, Lyle Streets, of course. Vanessa Parody. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Parody. <laughs> Not the Hoople. Uh, Faking Stevens. Sham <laughs> Sham 69. And, uh, of course, Bucks Fizz. Oh, no, no, strike that. They do themselves, eh? <laughs> Oh, ho. Got any leads yet? <laughs> Nothing. All we got is this blurry Mind photo taken off. They are, they are crap, Bucks Fizz. I mean, they used to play the Bradford Alhambra at the height of their fame. That says everything you need to know about them. Not, nothing against the Bradford Alhambra. It's a lovely place to go. But, you know, it's not the kind of place you'd see, uh, like, Aerosmith or somebody in. Somebody playing. You know what I mean? For CCTV. Put it into the computer. You want to take a look? Sure, can't hurt. Now, we've identified the man in the hat as Carson, and we got an ID on his accomplices from that uh, radio transmission we picked up in the truck. Yeah, so we got Carson. Who else we got? This here is Crazy Mary McCarthy. And over here, we got Jaime Defense Weisenberg. Uh, quite a little soiree. We got Carson, McCarthy, and Defense. What are they doing on that street on that particular day? Hmm. Ah, you see the guy on the corner with the shades on? Yeah, the reflective shades. Yeah, okay. Enhance. Uh-huh. Flip. Enhance again. Magnify. Hold that. Hold it. <laughs> oh, for God's it's sake, it's the advert it's again. Yep, it says all day power breakfast, two ninety-five at Benny's. <laughs> two ninety-five? <laughs> Let's eat! <laughs> Wait for me, boss. All day power breakfast, only two ninety-five at Benny's. How much more evidence do you need? Offer does not include blueberry waffles. Quick question, uh, also leave in the comments, where do you like to go for a breakfast not cooked at home? Like, you know, you go pay for it. So, my favourite always used to be the McDonald's big breakfast before they cancelled it. Still, I'll never forgive them for that. But now that that's gone, I suppose, Weatherspoons, you can't beat their breakfast. Or, Toby Carvery, if it's a nice one. Our Carvery's gone a bit downhill now. But they do this like potato and onion thing in the breakfast and it's, oh, it's absolutely delicious. But where do you like to go for breakfast? Let me know. Even if it's just like a, a, a cafe, you know. I'll look, you can't beat a cafe breakfast really, can you? Because it's sort of like homemade because it's just a couple of people running a cafe making a breakfast. You know, you can't go wrong. And what, what do you have? What do you have on your breakfast? Let me know. You're Tony. Uh, what is it? How come we got to work in here at night, man? Oh, Wally, how many things have I to tell you? It's a museum. We can't be in here during the day. The place is chock-a-block full of tourists. We've got buses going by, full of wains coming in and all that. You've got Jap tourists, Belgian tourists, Jerry tourists, and all the rest of it. You know what I mean? You've got pensioners stoting about. That's how we're in here at night. Well, I'm not a big fear to right, but this place gives me the willies, man. How? Well... I was through in that wing there, right? You got a painting of Ferdinand Magellan, right? Cutting about his boat and all that. Aye, I know who he is, aye. Right, well, I'm painting around about him like that. Aye? Aye, he's a totally phone me about like that, man. <laughs> Boy, how long have I been at a painting game? Fourteen years. So I should know a thing or two about painting, eh? Aye. Well, that's a mark of a good painting, right? Doesn't matter where you are in the room, the eyes full of your boot. <laughs> all right, well, that makes me feel better. Aye. See that big painting down the stair? Aye. That's Salvador Dali's dying Christ, right? Now, the thing about Salvador Dali was he couldn't paint eyes, he was rubbish at eyes, right? That's why our Lord is looking down. That's why you can't see his face. <laughs> oh, man, Salvador Dali, man, big mad moustache and all that, man. Aye, he's into drugs and all, man. Still, man, be worth a few bob that, eh? Much? Ten grand. That is all I. I would look great above your fireplace. Aye, but it's too bulky to get out, you know what I mean? You'd need to get a Stanley blade and go out of the the outside edge, you know what I mean? And roll it up like a bit of wallpaper. Can you do that, but man? That's their showpiece. That's right, you see it as soon as you come in the door. Tell you something, but I'm not going the whole week, you know me, for lifting stuff. 
I've had a wee think about that, Tony. Right, you know your pal Roddy. Sells his stupid plastic dinosaurs down the barris. I stick a sorry she's not a boat man, sure. We cut through there, get that T-Rex and get to him, man. That'd be a great advert for his stall. What, a big dinosaur? <laughs> uh, yeah, right enough, eh? It wouldn't matter what way you come into a bar as you see it's big stupid heat sticking up, you'd know exactly where to get the dinos, eh? Exactly, man, exactly. Oh, spot on, man. Right, I'll go and get some paint. Here, Wally. What? What you don't get a fright when you open the van? How? Because I've blagged a leopard, man. I've put it away for a Wednesday's birthday. <laughs> This summer, I was just gonna say that used to freak me out when I was little. You know how pictures, the eyes follow you. That used to freak me out because at my grandma's house she used to have, well, she still does pictures on every possible surface that she could have them on of us, the family, whoever. And the eyes, I just, you know, they used to follow. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Weird. 20th Century Fox invites you to the motion picture event of the year. Meet Ben Hardaway. He's just graduated from college. Now he needs a job and a new apartment if he wants to live the high life. If he can just shake the low lives. Meet Seamus and Mickey, two of the most mischievous little people you're ever likely to meet. Ow! Look, guys, how am I supposed to get a girlfriend when you're always hanging around my apartment? Oh, sure now, Ben. Bring her in here and we can all screw her. Not only are they leprechauns, but they're drug addicts, too. Look, guys, you can't use my kitchen as a shooting gallery. Ah, shut up and lift this up to the stove so I can cook up. Sure, look at this. I took me belt off to put around my arm and my trousers are falling down. Oh, I'm a tiger. <laughs> Featuring Christopher Walken as the leprechaun catcher. I'm not leaving here till I've caught these slimy little green... Bastards. <laughs> this summer, prepare yourself for madness, mayhem, and money at the end of the rainbow in Ben's Friends. Ah, shut up! You wish for a 12 inch prick! No, you could do! Ah. <laughs> I love a movie. I too love a film for I'll tell you what I prefer mm. a movie cliche. Oh, I cannot get better than a movie cliche. Superman. Up the main road, right? Mm -hmm. Then he flies around the corner, up a lane. Yeah. Full regalia on. Mm -hmm. Past a tramp who's sitting next to a skip with a bottle of wine inside a brown paper bag. Yeah. And the tramp goes, <laughs> sees Superman, and then goes, <laughs> never again. Yeah. Same thing with James Bond. Coming out of the water in the car, the Lotus. Guy on the beach, bum. <gasps> clocks it, clocks the bottle. <gasps> yeah. Never again. Yeah. And now, you know what else I love? What? I see if you get a little girl in a film or a little boy, mm -hmm. and they get so much as the tiniest of coughs. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna die. Within three scenes. <laughs> they what I like as well. The shouty police boss. <laughs> He's always got a shout. I got the GA breathing down my goddamn ass on this one. Can never talk, can never whisper. And he always goes like this. You're off the case! And the That's when I've noticed. Every film you watch, American film, where there's cops in it, it's always, oh, the goddamn DEA, or the FBI's breathing down my neck. Oh, you know, the... Uh, the sheriff's on my ass. It's like, bro, chill. Just not every single situation, the chief has to be having a bad time. Not every city in America is ridden with crime so much that the guy leading the force is on the verge of being fired. Chill. I bet Tarantino doesn't do that. Mind you, I haven't seen many of his films. Apart from, uh, not Pulp Fiction, what's the other one? Where uh, they all end up in a warehouse. What is it? Is it Pulp Fiction? No, that's one with Samuel L. Jackson, isn't it? It'll come to me. I'm never off the case, are they? No, never off the case. The guy who's been off the case never says, Oh, okay, fair enough. I'll take a couple of weeks off. I made a pig's ass of it, you know? Yeah, I do love a cliché, though. Mm, me too. <coughs> oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Nothing? Nothing. Where'd you get this guy? We found him floating in the Potomac. My guess has been there three to five hours. Okay, what age do you reckon he is? I don't know, 34, 35, maybe. See, the thing is, the guy's got really well manicured nails, you know? It's been called new. That's them turned the kitchen and the oh. hall into an Arctic line. Easy. Well, you know, about a week ago when that city slicker came... 
Right, I'll wait and get some paint. Here. Guy, sorry about that. in the Potomac. My guess has been there three to five hours. Okay, what age do you reckon he is? I don't know, 34, 35 maybe. See, the thing is, the guy's got really well manicured nails, you know? He's a suit, he ain't no blue collar. So this guy looked after himself, huh? Not today, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the lungs are clean, he's a non-smoker. I'll tell you what, we'll uh, cut open his stomach there and get a look inside. His last meal won't be digested yet. Ooh, that smells great, what is that? I don't know, it's uh, two, maybe three bacon rashers, a couple of eggs. Those are definitely pancakes. Mm, what's the liquid? Is that coffee? Mm, this guy's drunk a lot of coffee. Oh, oh wait a minute. Please tell me that what I'm thinking is going to happen isn't about to happen, because I'm going to be eating after this. Oh, God. A whole lot of coffee. Wait a minute. Are those hash browns? Yeah. Oh, this is the all-day power breakfast at Benny's, only two ninety-five with refills. That explains the coffee. Let's go. Mmm. <laughs> all-day power breakfast at Benny's, Thank only God for that. What's the matter? Ain't you got the guts for it? Offer does not include millionaire grits. How's your tea? Hey, Victor and Jack. Say kind of no. Jack and Victor. No. What do you mean not? Say kind of. Say kind of nob. No. A nib knob. What do you mean not? Take a nib knob. Take a nib knob. What and what? Just leave it. Mm, it's not like you. I'm gonna get a rest, Jack. I'm wrapping them. Wrapping what? Nib knobs. You're not going yeah. back to your piss it diet, are you? Any good, you know. Drive me off my nut. Well, I did warn you. One packet a week. That's what we promised ourselves. Aye, well, I broke it. I've been cheating. What do you <laughs> mean you broke it? I bought a pack on Monday. Mm-hmm. And the lot, same again Tuesday. Oh, God. I can already see where this is going. They're gonna make make it out like it's uh, cigarettes, but it's biscuits. <laughs> Funny, yeah. Take back, Tar. I woke up on Wednesday morning and the packet was the first thing I reached for. I'm uh -huh. telling you, Jack, they've got a grip on me. Uh -huh. You taking to hiding? I'm running about the house. Aye, ran away and found some there in the washing machine. You know. Oh God. Really embarrassing it was. Ah. So I turned the whole pack down the chute there. I promised myself that was that. It's me been cold turkey for two days now. God. How are you feeling? Rough, I'm feeling rough. I had a pack of rich tea there, you know, yesterday, but it's no substitute. <laughs> no, it's no substitute. Old Tom across the landing for me, he's addicted to the mint yo-yos. Packets and packets and packets he eats. I found him running about bollock naked down at the bottom of the flat, still clutching the packet in his horn. He gets him off the van. Aye, I'll not go near that van. The bloody dealer's in death. Surprised uh, he bought him. It's not that. Tam's not got the money for a yo-yo habit, you know. That van bastard's got his pension book. He's either that or kneecap him. So, Tam's only just had that knee fixed and all. <laughs> Good old bugger trying to sell me his wally dugs and all. Aye, right, well, I'm not going to end up like that. That's me. I'm finished. Aye. Right. Good for you. <laughs> He's one. <laughs> well, come on now, Victor. Get a grip. He's one. Be strong. Come on, Jack, I'm just needing a wee boost. Come on, Jack, I'm just needing a wee boost. Tea. <laughs> I'm not wanting a rich tea. I'm it's not wanting a rich tea. I'm needing. It's a bloody nib knob I'm needing. Listen to me, Victor. <laughs> you listen. I've got half a cup of tea there. I'm needing one. Look at me, man. I'm, I'm shaking. I'm sweating. Victor. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Ooh, it's you got three stations now, Linda. Linda? Linda. Gonna no jam the piece into the board like that. Hey? It leaves wee dents on it. Every time we play Monopoly, you always go that iron. You never go the hat, the car, or the wee Scotty Doug. Always the jaggy iron. Who else knows somebody like this? I think, was it my mum? Or somebody else? Once when we were playing a board game, if I even tapped the thing that you're using to go around the board even a bit too hard, they were like, don't do that, you'll dent the board. It's like, it's a piece of cardboard, you're writing on it. <laughs> it's like, chill out, it's a board game, it's not a fucking Rembrandt. <laughs> Noticeable, Harry. See when the designers designed this game, do you think they meant for you to...
I don't think it was my mum. I think it was a, f a friend, actually. I can't see her being bothered about something like that. Because she's normal. You know. I don't know. The not matter, does it? Scam that through the soft cardboard like that. Don't answer because the answer's no. Anyway, it's my goal. Oh, double four. Doublers, yes. <laughs> Pentonville Road. Actually, I own Pentonville Road. Twelve pounds, please. Ah, she's got you there, Harry. Come on, cough up. I'll have another shot at a double there. Can I get my no. twelve pounds? Pay her. There, you've made me lose count now. <laughs> Fine Street. One hotel on Vine Street. Let me just get my card and oh. see what that is. You've had it now. I'm still waiting on my twelve pound. For God's sake, you're like a broken record there. Will you just wait a minute? The man is trying to calculate how much I owe him. Can you were her first. Thousand pounds, Harry. Right, five, six, seven, Ooh. eight, nine, three. Three pounds short, George. Yeah. Ah. Is it when you pass go? I'm still waiting on my twelve. You're short now, George. Harry. Carry on, George. <laughs> Harry. What is it? I'm still waiting on my... I know, 12 pounds. Just wait a minute. Are you blind? Can you not see I've just given the guy big money? A thousand pounds, big money. Right, just a quick question. When I used to play Monopoly with... I can't remember who it was, but... The money... That... You have to pay back... When you pick up a community chest or whatever. And it says, pay this money to so-and-so. Do you put that money in the middle of the board... And then whoever lands on, is it free parking? They win that money in the middle. Because I think it was at school. We played Monopoly and someone said that that's what, what you do. The money that you have to pay when you get a card saying you owe so-and-so or pay this tax, blah, blah, blah. You put that money in the middle of the board and then somebody, the next person who lands on something, I don't know if it was free parking or something else, because... I think it was free parking, because when me and my grandma used to play, we didn't know the rules. We literally made up, like, our own version of Monopoly. It was bloody brilliant. And poker. Um, but, no, at school, someone said, you've got to put that money in the middle, and then whoever lands on free parking wins that money. And it was free parking, because me and my grandma, we didn't know what free parking was for. So we used to just ignore it. And I think it was the same at school. So is that true? Or were they bullshitting me? Well, bullshitting us all, just to get more money. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody cheats at board games. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're, the, if you're King Charles. Everybody cheats at board games, especially Monopoly. Well, it's 997. You still owe him three. And he'll get it when I pass go, just like you'll get your 12 proxy pounds when I pass go. You should have paid me before you paid him. Shouldn't he be out of the game by now? Charming, isn't it? When you lose well, your money, you're out. I'll just go to my bed, right? That's what yeah. I'll do. I'll go to my bed and I'll leave you and yeah. my best pal George to sit yeah. in here nice and cosy wozy. Well, let me remind you of something, Linda. This is my game. My game, Jimmy! Ah! 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 I am! Oh, that bloody I am! <laughs> you got exactly what you deserve, you prick. <laughs> What an arsehole he is. Marvin, what do you think you're doing? You play like a Nancy out there. 20 grand a game for Pete's sake. I ain't ever seen a slower linebacker in all my life. Well, I'm sorry, boss. It's like that. What are you... Um, Elizabeth Davis, can I just ask? Please, can you send me some more of this, please? Please. I'll pay you. I can't find this anywhere. I'm not even going to bother looking. I know I can't get this down here. So, if you send me more, I'll pay you for it. But this, I know you mentioned something about the homemade... But I'm not bothered about it. It's this. This to me is like perfection. I could sit and nibble this all day. I mean, I don't want to because I'll get fat again. But, well, I'm not exactly skinny either. But, you know. So please send me some more of this in bulk and I'll pay you for it. Because it is absolutely. It, it's the dog's bollocks, as you and a few others said. I mean, it's like this, Marvin! You ain't catching nah. traits! Well, how can I concentrate when it's all day power breakfast for two ninety five oh. and Benny's? <laughs> the advert again. Everybody on the bus, we're going to Benny's. All right. <laughs> all day power breakfast, only two ninety five at Benny's. Offer does not include five egg omelet. Good morning, sir. It's a lovely day. How can I help you? Uh. uh it was actually a double decker I was after. 
Ah, right. Well, that, that might be a bit of a problem. Uh, I've used all my double deckers to make this double decker man here. <laughs> See, I'm in here in my own all the time. I think it's alone, so it, uh, it gives me somebody to talk to, you know. I've had to glue the bits together to make the arms and the torso and the legs, but, but the ones in his head are just piled on. I, I could... Someone to talk to? You're running a shop. You literally talk to every single person who walks in there probably every minute or so if you're a popular shop. Come on. <laughs> Jesus. You shouldn't have time to be talking to a bloody double-decker man. You should be busy. <laughs> oh, God. Good luck one off for you, if you like. I've oh, heard about I'm loneliness, fine. but... I'll just leave it. Yeah. Okay, Get out of there Bye-bye. while you while you still got a chance. Do you see that? Do you see that? I don't need you. I don't need any of you. Mm-hmm. Because I've got Mr. Double-decker. <laughs> Later on, him and I are going to be having a cup of tea. So you can all just go away. A cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> oh, NASA. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Houston Space Tour. Today, I'll be showing you how America became the leaders in the space race and how we hope to maintain that advantage well into the 21st century. Oh, really? Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, right, you're at the back there. I- I've got a question, you know, about the conditions in outer space. Fire away, and I'll do my best to answer it. Well, um, see the spacemen when they need the toilet? How, how, how do they go to the toilet in outer space? <laughs> <laughs> this would literally be me. I'd be the one asking all the stupid questions like, you know these astronauts in space, where do they piss? <laughs> how do they piss? <laughs> I mean, I know, obviously, they have a tube attached while they're flying up and stuff. But I'd be asking all the silly questions like, uh, I don't know. Can they make a cup of tea? Can they watch Netflix? <laughs> You know, that'd be me, so. <laughs> well, the spacesuits worn by the astronauts are equipped with miles and miles of tubing and many storage areas in case of any eventualities. And uh, I'm sure you can imagine the rest. No. Yeah. I'll beg your pardon? Ah, no! No, I can't imagine it. Um, you'll have to explain it to me. Uh, let, let's move on, shall we? Um, well, you know, what about the conditions actually inside the shuttle itself, you know? Well, facilities on board the space shuttle are very similar to those at home, though, as you can imagine, with zero G, the astronauts have to be pretty careful. So, what happens when they flush? Does it, does it just flush into outer space? No, it's stored in special compartments on board the shuttle and return home with the astronauts. For it analysis. should be, really, shouldn't it? So, can. Analysis. <laughs> what? They analyse the astronauts' shite, do they? <laughs> no, I know, I knew that they did that. Do they still do that, though? I know that they did it when they first started going to space, or to the space station, that they used to analyse the astronauts' shit and piss. I mean, you know, everyone's got their own hobbies, I guess. (laughs) Do they still do that? Why? It's just, I don't know. The stuff they do is weird. Can you buy some of that in the gift shop? No! No, I didn't imagine you could. I hope that answers your question. Hey, uh, yeah, that's great, thanks. No, no, you asking that question has left me asking a, m- a lot of questions about you, sir. <laughs> you want to buy the astronaut shite? <laughs> oh, God. Space is dead interesting, isn't it? I like to think so. Magic. Good, mm. now if you folks would Magic. like to follow me into the hangar, we'll have a look at a model of Sputnik. And the very first capsule ever launched into... Uh, here we go again. Yes, sir, another question. Yes, uh, do, do you know that wee dog that, that they launched into outer space in the 60s with the wee space suit on? Yep. Yeah. How did that shite? <laughs> <laughs> How did that shite? <laughs> Code word. How did that shite? <laughs> I knew the dog you was talking Actually, that's a good question. You know, the dog that they sent into space, how did it shite? Did it just shite all over the module? Oh, that poor little dog. It died, didn't it? Never came back. Mind you, never did any of the animals that they sent into space, really. Well, most of them. They all died. They're animals, aren't they? It's not like they can fly back home. Even though they were controlling themselves. The, you know, back at control. But he's just there to ask questions about space shite. <laughs> Son, that's Leonardo away now, but... Oh, back to her again. Wonderman. 
Come and see son Carol Vorderman in her house for a Carol Vorderman. Oh, Carol, that's an offy. Short skirt you're wearing there and that wee <laughs> skimpy blouse. You can fair see your nipples through that. Eh? <laughs> there's, there's Carol saying that she likes younger men, son. Aye, here's, here she is. It's Carol Vorderman waiting to get with you, son. Hurry up! <laughs> well, the last bit of the last show. Yeah. Be a little while before we don done the old end of show cardigans again, Ford. Yeah. Oh, you know I don't wow. like to stick the pin in the big bubble. I know that. But the thing is, this isn't a real flat. I mean, it's not a real apartment. It's just a set. Nah, the good people know that. Yeah, they must know that. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just that I like that fish, you know. Take it. Yeah? Yeah, take it. This phone's coming home with me. Right. <laughs> you know what else is coming home with me? Have that. What? <laughs> I'm taking that plant as Are well. You? Move quickly, though. I'm taking everything they can. Oi! That stuff's all hired. Uh -huh. Back. <laughs> Hold on, isn't it their production company that made this? So technically, it all belongs to them anyway. F and G. So, the guy saying, Oi, get it right up, ye. <laughs> and the cardigans. <laughs> Jesus! Not even a cardigan. Fantastic. He's still looking. Mm, no, he's away. Mm. <laughs> right. Good <laughs> 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 <Hey. laughs> Godspeed. Godspeed. <laughs> to me, to me, to me. I like the skinny one. He's got nice skin. I like the fat one. He's got a pretty mouth. <laughs> that is such a generic sound effect for farting. Even to this day, they still use the same sound effects for everything. Babies crying, dogs, uh, general um, suburban street noise, farts. It's so annoying. Why don't they update them? It's shite. I heard a plot. <laughs> Here's the weather forecast for tomorrow. The west of Scotland will have a wet day with icy winds making temperatures dip close to freezing. The borders will also have one or two heavy showers. But over in the east... How's it zero degrees here but ten degrees there? Is there like an infinity wall going down the middle? <laughs> what the hell? That's weird. Is that possible? a milder day, perhaps the occasional shower, but mainly sunny. And in the Highlands and Islands, a large mythical five-headed dog will eat the sun, so wrap up warmly if you're planning to go out. <laughs> the summary then, cold in the west, wet in the south, milder in the east, and dog in the north. Dog in the north! <laughs> right, well there you have it. That's the final episode of series one of Chewing the Fat. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Uh, well, so for, for the last episode of a series, um, it was it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to continuing with this. But I am sort of glad that we're done with season one because, as many of you have said, this didn't get good until season two onwards, really. So... Even though, see, you know, nothing really wrong with this first season. I enjoyed every episode. It wasn't hilarious. Laugh out loud, every every joke hilarious. Like that uh, still game stage show that we've still got the final part to do. But it's, it's good. It's enjoyable. You know, it's something that I could just put on, sit and watch. Pass a bit of time if I wanted to enjoy myself or, you know, you know. But yeah, if it's uh, if it's going to improve from season two onwards, then good. I'm looking forward to that. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and thanks for watching up until now, up until season uh, two. I don't know when we'll get back to it, um, but it shouldn't be too long. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, if you enjoyed this, make sure you... Uh, give it a like, uh, comment, share, and do subscribe to the channel if you are new. Um, that's it. Yeah, so thank you all again for watching. I hope you're all having a great weekend so far. 
um, and the Yachtsman reacts. Until next time, take care. Goodbye.